Hi, I'm Michael Despezio and welcome. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at energy, an introduction to energy. As you'll discover, energy can exist in many different forms and it can change from one form or type to another. However, the total, the sum amount of energy within any system doesn't change. It is conserved. Now, before we get into the topics of this lesson, let's see what you already know. I want you to take a look at these statements here, and I want you to decide if they are true or false. All right, that first one, energy can change from one form to another. I think you know that one already, and that one is true. What about that next statement? An object can have only one type of energy at a time. Think about it. And that is false. The next statement, if an object has energy, it must be moving. True or false? And that is also false. And finally, all energy travels in waves. From what you know, is this true or false? And I think a number of you will realize that energy can travel in other ways besides traveling in waves. So that is false as well. Okay, let's get energized with this first challenge. I want you to take a look at this image. You can see it's several students playing in a band. And if you had a piece of paper and a pencil, you can certainly write down a caption or you can think about a caption. How would you caption this image in the context of energy? What would you say? Well, I'd look at this and say that these students are creating sound energy and that they're using a blast of air which is changed by that instrument to make something that you and I can hear which we call sound energy. Now what is energy? Now it's very different from matter where matter has mass and it has volume. Energy is nothing like that at all. What energy can do is it has the capability or the ability to cause change. And if we look, we can find that energy can have many different forms and can cause many different types of changes or effects. There are two general types of energy, and I think you may have heard of this before. One type of energy is called kinetic energy, and the other type of energy is called potential energy. So what is kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is the energy of motion. All objects in motion have kinetic energy. My arm going back and forth like this has kinetic energy because it is in motion. Now the amount of kinetic energy that any object has is dependent upon two things. It's mass and the speed at which it's moving. If we look here, we can see that a bowling ball is striking a set of pins, and that bowling ball has kinetic energy. Now, the kinetic energy comes from the movement of the ball. Now, the amount of kinetic energy that that bowling ball has is dependent upon two things. It's dependent upon the mass of the ball and also the speed of the moving ball. Now, just imagine if a bowling ball wasn't this big, but instead was only this big. What would happen if it hit those pins? Would it have enough energy to knock them over? Maybe not. That's because the smaller the mass, the less kinetic energy that a moving object has. The greater the mass, imagine a huge boulder instead of a bowling ball, and it'd be able to knock down many more than just a few pins because it has more kinetic energy. Now, what about potential energy? What's potential energy? Well, potential energy doesn't have anything to do with movement. It is the energy of position. It is the energy of condition or of chemical composition. It is the potential for causing change. Now, the familiar form of potential energy that most of us have probably heard about is what's called gravitational potential energy. And that is the energy of position. The higher object is from the surface of the Earth, the more potential energy it has. So if you want to increase an object's potential energy, you bring it up because 
What that means is that now it has a greater distance to fall. It has a greater distance to travel. So you can take potential energy, release that object, and that potential energy may transfer into that object's kinetic energy of its fall. Now, gravitational potential energy increases as you bring something up, and it decreases as that object gets closer to the surface of the Earth. I need you to take a look at these two pictures here. What types of energy are shown below? Now, there are quite a few different types, but if you look at that first picture of those two divers that are standing there on their platforms, they have potential energy. They have potential energy of their position because they're located above the pool. Are they moving? Well, not that much. So let's say that they have very little kinetic energy, but they have potential energy. Now, what happens when a diver steps off that platform? Well, that potential energy is going to change into what? You got it into the energy of their movement, into kinetic energy. And we can see that kinetic energy in that next picture. Or we can see them exhibiting kinetic energy because we have divers that are dropping down, that are moving through the air towards the surface of that pool. So we've got potential energy shown on the left and the energy of motion shown on the right. How can an object's energy change? Well, a change in the condition of an object affects its potential energy. If I had a rubber band and I stretched it, what is that rubber band going to want to do? <laughs> Snap right back. As I stretch the rubber band, I am adding more potential energy to that system. Now, chemical potential energy depends upon chemical composition. A cell, a dry cell, what you might call the battery, has chemicals that are inside of it which can react with each other and they can cause electricity. So that chemical cell has the potential to create electricity. When does it create it? Well, you need to attach a wire to the terminals and then we can get the flow of electrons. Also, we have the potential energy of chemical bonds. If you can think back to tiny particles, remember like H2O formed together with hydrogen and oxygen atoms, and the bonds that hold these atoms together have potential energy. That's why when you, say, light a piece of paper on fire, that fire, or excuse me, the matter undergoes changes where the bonds release energy, and that is the light or the heat that we feel. So we can see that there's different types of potential energy. Not only that gravitational potential energy, but the potential energy of position and of composition. Can objects have potential and kinetic energy at the same time? Yes, they can. An object can have both types of energy. For a moment, I want you to consider a skateboarder that's at the top of a U, and they're sitting right up at the top of the hill, ready to go down. At that point, they have potential energy due to their position, but no kinetic energy. However, once they launch themselves, they begin to pick up speed. Now, they still have the potential of falling even further down that ramp. So they have potential energy, but they also have the kinetic energy of motion. So you can see that objects can have both kinetic and potential energy at the same time. Now let's look at this race car here. What types of energy can you associate with it? First, might be kinetic energy, the energy of its movement. And while you're watching it go by, there's a chance you might hear another type of energy. The sound energy produced by the engine. What happens if we look inside of this vehicle? Well, within the fuel tank, we're going to find another type of energy. We're going to find the energy in the chemical bonds of gasoline that is released within the engine and used to drive this vehicle forward. Now, what forms can energy take? We talked about two general types of energy. We've got kinetic energy, the energy of motion, 
and potential energy, the energy of position or condition. Now, these types of energy can be divided down into specific types, and they include mechanical energy, the energy of, of movement, of sound is another form of energy. We're looking at electromagnetic energy, light, infrared, radar, visible light that we can see. Also, we have electrical energy. We have chemical energy, thermal energy, and nuclear energy. Energy is measured in units called joules, which is represented by a J. Now, what forms can energy take? Well, I mentioned mechanical energy before. And mechanical energy is the sum total of an object's kinetic energy and potential energy. So it's the energy of both the position and motion. Let's go back to that skateboarder again. So we have the skateboarder at the top of the ramp where that skateboarder has a lot of potential energy. And if they're not moving, zero kinetic energy. Midway, as they're racing down that ramp, they've got a higher amount of kinetic energy, which is increasing, and potential energy, which is decreasing. But the sum of those two types of energy give you the mechanical energy of that skateboarder. And by the way, when that skateboarder is at the bottom of the ramp, right there, they have relatively zero potential energy because there's no further place for them to go down. But they're at their maximum speed, their maximum kinetic energy. Now, sound energy is kinetic energy that is caused by vibrations. And these vibrations can travel through all sorts of media. Air, as I'm speaking now, you can hear me. But sound vibrations can also travel in water, and it can also travel in solid materials as well. Light energy is another form of energy. And I mentioned this before, electromagnetic energy. And here we can see light being split up into the component colors which form the visible spectrum. Now, electromagnetic energy, unlike other forms of energy, can be transferred through the vacuum of space. You don't need particles. When I'm talking with you, when you're hearing my sound, these are vibrations that are traveling in air or in solid or in liquid. But when it comes to light, Light does not need a medium to travel with. It can travel through the vacuum of space. From the sun, it can travel this great distance and bathe our planet. Now, the waves of electromagnetic radiation are caused by vibration of charged particles. And they include visible light, x-rays, and also another type of radiation called microwaves. Now, electrical energy is the energy that results from the position or the movement of charged particles. And you're familiar with that. If you flip on a light switch in your house, you complete a circuit which allows charged particles to move through a lamp, causing heat and causing that lamp to light up. Now, chemical energy is a form of potential energy, which I talked about before. And the amount of chemical energy that an object contains depends upon the kinds of atoms that are within that object, within that substance, and their arrangement. Now, you may have heard of a material called TNT. Bang! TNT is made up of molecules that have a lot of potential energy. Other examples of chemical energy include this liquid, which is put into a car's fuel tank, gasoline. So the bonds of gasoline, like the bonds of TNT, contain energy that can be released. In the case of a car engine, it's a slow release. And that release, that change of chemical energy to heat, is harnessed by the car's engine to change that expansion of heated gas into the rotation of the tires in that movement of the car. Other examples of chemical energy are found in the bonds of the food that you eat. So when you are eating food, 
you're eating chemicals that have potential energy and your body, your cells, release that energy and use that energy to drive the life processes. Now, thermal energy is the energy that an object has within its particle. It's the movement of those particles. And you know what? We can see that in this image right here. This image is taken with a special tool that can visualize thermal energy. Now, the faster the particles of an object move, the more thermal energy it has. So if we heat something up, its particles begin moving faster and faster and faster, and they have increased amounts of thermal energy. If we look at the transfer of thermal energy, energy can move from one object to another. It moves from the warmer object to the cooler object. It doesn't go from cold to warm. Thermal energy is the energy of heat, and that moves from warmer objects to cooler objects. In fact, if you took your hand and placed your hand, say, on a metal surface, most likely it would feel cool. Although both the metal surface and your hand start off at the same temperature, what happens is that as you place your hand on that metal surface, the heat, the thermal energy from your hand moves, is transferred into that metal. The metal soaks up that thermal energy. As your hand begins to lose that thermal energy, it begins to feel cooler. And that's why your hand feels cool when you place it on a substance such as metal. It has to do with the transfer of thermal energy. Now, the nucleus of an atom also has energy, and this is the form of nuclear energy. And nuclear energy, we can envision it when either atoms fuse together as what goes on in the sun. So within this nearby star, atoms fuse together. As they come together, they produce nuclear energy. But you know what? We can also get nuclear energy by splitting an atom. If we split an atom, what happens is that we release nuclear energy. So you can get nuclear energy by either fusing, atomic fusion, nuclei together, or by splitting nuclei, and then we have nuclear fission. Take a look at this pinball toy. What forms of energy can you see here? Take a look at that. What do you see? Well, I can see that that ball is in mo motion, so we have kinetic energy. I think I'm going to be hearing some sounds, so we have certainly, we have some sound energy. What about lights? Are the lights going on? Is there electricity involved? What about the flippers? Is there movement there? You can see that energy is found in many parts of this system. Let's talk now a little bit more about energy transformation, when energy changes from one form to another. Now, energy can undergo many different types of changes, and you might be familiar with energy transformation when it comes to a flashlight. And here we have an image that shows the inside of a flashlight. We have those chemical cells. Remember, those battery cells contain potential energy due to the bonds that they are making, and there's going to be reactions which are going to create electricity or electrical energy. And that electrical energy is going to travel in wires or in the circuit to that bulb. And once it goes to the bulb, it causes the bulb to heat up and produce light energy. So we have energy transformation within a flashlight which begins when we close the circuit. Then we have the chemical transformation into electrical energy within the battery cells. That electrical energy travels to the light bulb, heats up that filament. As that filament heats up, it produces light, and that's what we see. So we can see here a great example of the transformation of energy. What about conserving energy? 
A closed system has objects that transfer energy and change energy from one form to another within that system. Energy is not created nor destroyed, it's conserved. So the sum of energy stays the same. However, it can change forms. So remember, you cannot create nor destroy energy within that system, but you can certainly change it from one form to another. And if you look at the total amount of the energy within that system, after it's undergone the change, that sum of energy has stayed the same. And that's what the conservation of energy is all about. So in summary, for this lesson, what you've learned is that energy is the ability to cause change. Energy can have many different forms or types. And there are two main categories, two main kinds of energy. One is kinetic energy, the energy of motion. And the other is potential energy, the energy of position or of composition or of condition. And finally, although energy can change its form, the amount of energy in a closed system always stays the same. Well, thank you for joining me in this lesson, and I trust I'll see you in another of my science lessons. If you'd like to learn more about science education, please visit my Twitter or join us at hashtag HMH Science. See you in the next lesson.